once a normal house cat living on Earth. Dexter was abandoned and brought into the Brooklyn Animal Shelter. Luckily for him, the cat was adopted by a new owner. Dexter's constant companionship and affection towards his owner was always returned in kind, greatly improving the quality of one another's life. One night, a burglar broke into the owner's home. Dexter was protective of his owner, scratching the criminal and causing him to cry out in pain. This woke up the owner, who called out for help. But help never came. The following day, two police officers discovered the crime scene, where Dexter's owner was brutally killed. Dexter was kicked out of the apartment by the police, who assumed the cat was a stray and would contaminate the crime scene. The cat was left homeless and alone. For a long time, he lived in a box on the street, until he was discovered by two vicious men who threw Dexter into a bag and tossed the cat over the Brooklyn Bridge, simply to watch it drown. As the two evil men debated whether or not the cat would perish from the impact of the fall, the rage in Dexter's heart grew to a breaking point. Dexter of Earth, you have great rage in your heart. You belong to the Red Lantern Corps. <laughs> The Red Lanterns are a dark and powerful core formed out of the blood spilled millions of years ago in Sector 666, when the Guardians, rulers of the Green Lanterns, had once relied on beings known as Manhunters to police their space. Due to a supposed programming error, the Manhunters slaughtered every living being in Sector 666 before they were finally stopped by the Guardians. Only five individuals survived and they became a terrorist group called the Five Inversions, intent on taking revenge on the devastating losses that happened. Atrocitus, one of the Inversions, was captured and imprisoned on a planet called Gizmalt. He used the blood of the other Five Inversions and a primitive ritual to create the Red Lantern Corps, which harnesses the power of rage across the universe. Red Lantern rings seek out individuals with tremendous rage in their heart. Dexter was one such being. The cat became Dex Star, gaining the powers and attributes of every Red Lantern. His blood was violently expelled from his body, replaced with a plasma that has a napalm-like property and can be expelled as vomit for offensive purposes. The power of the red energy that represents rage burns in the bodies of Red Lanterns, replacing their hearts. Like all Lanterns, their power rings grant the user the ability of flight and can project protective force fields around the ring bearer. However, the extreme nature of Red Lanterns means that Dexter completely lost his sanity and mental reasoning. Though it gave the house cat a sense of coherent thought and therefore made it considerably more intelligent than a regular cat, that thought was now focused on revenge, violence, and pure rage. These feelings are so powerful and overwhelming, they can only be quenched by the powers of a Blue Lantern. The cat's first act as a Red Lantern was to hunt down the man who murdered his owner, and presumably, Dexter violently murdered the man before instinctively traveling to his malt to seek the one Red Lantern that could still think clearly, and retained some sense of self, the only one who could command the mindless and growing horde of Red Lanterns, their creator, Atrocitus. The powerful leader of the Red Lanterns quickly became, to Dexter, his new master. Dexter, out of all the Red Lanterns, has always been a constant companion at Atrocitus' side, serving him loyally and without question over the years. Thus, Dexter was part of the first violent attack the Red Lanterns ever made against both the Sinestro Corps and the Green Lanterns. The Loyal House Cat would continue to help Atrocitus in his initial campaign against the Guardians and Sinestro, and Dexter's service would continue long after this first conflict was abated. When the Guardians created the Ruthless Alpha Lanterns and had these powerful beings attack his malt, Dexter was among those that managed to survive this brutal onslaught. However, during the battle, 
those who were slain from the conflict rose as Black Lanterns. The Blackest Night, an event believed to mark the end of the universe, had begun. A sinister being called Necron had devised a scheme that he had put in motion for years to consume all life in the universe. At Atrocitus's behest, Dexter was one of the many Red Lanterns who participated in the final battle against Necron, and those who stood for life ultimately emerged victorious in this massive conflict. Following this, Dexter remained on Earth at Atrocitus's side, as his master watched and observed the people living on this planet. The leader of the Red Lanterns was beginning to feel a growing sense of purpose in finding a certain balance in the universe, beyond his original goal of simple revenge against the Guardians. During a violent robbery on the subway, Dexter appeared and angrily immolated one of the criminals attacking citizens on the train, before Atrocitus took care of the rest. Dexter's master used the blood of these guilty men to perform a ritual, in an effort to hunt down the emotional entities that empower each of the Lantern Corps. He was then confronted by Hal Jordan, Sinestro, and Carol Ferris, until all four of the Lanterns were attacked by an alien bounty hunter named Lobo, and his dog named Dog. In the resulting fray, Dexter proved vastly superior to Dog, who the cat easily defeated. Secretly, Atrocitus had hired Lobo into staging the attack in order to use the conflict as a means to prove to the others that the Red Lanterns weren't the biggest threat currently out there. Thus, he was able to negotiate a truce with Hal, Carol, and Sinestro, and in turn, each of the massive core they represent. With Atrocitus' plan successful, the Red Lanterns could now begin pursuing their own agenda without having to worry about other major Lantern Corps being directly and actively at war with each other. With a clean slate, Atrocitus began to rethink his Lantern Corps and his overall situation. He later had to rescue Dexter when the cat was nearly killed by a group of vicious aliens intent on torturing the feline. Atrocitus personally carried the cat back to Ismal to heal. There, the Red Lanterns had begun to regain some degree of sentience, thanks to the pool of blood that surrounds the Red Lantern power battery. Though it did make many of the Red Lanterns more rebellious, as they were no longer mindlessly under Atrocitus' control, their ability to think came with a great deal of benefits. Dexter, the ever-faithful cat, never strayed in his loyalty towards his master, unlike the other Red Lanterns. In turn, Atrocitus treated the cat well for his loyalty. Atrocitus' new purpose and plans were quickly waylaid when he came into conflict with the first Red Lantern a flawed creature Atrocitus abandoned and buried named Abyssimus. This being's attack on the Red Lanterns was so effective it nearly destroyed the entire core, and the Red Lanterns were forced to abandon the Ismalt. Dexter remained at Atrocitus' side throughout the entire ordeal, developing a grudge against an individual named the Midnighter in the process. It was eventually discovered that Abyssimus was working on behalf of the Guardians, as the Green Lantern's masters were eager to take out one of their worst enemies once and for all, while the Guardians were increasingly growing corrupt themselves. Atrocitus managed to kill Abyssimus and use part of this being to restore and empower the Red Lanterns. Dexter, with the other Red Lanterns, returned to Ismalt, and the reunited corps slaughtered the undead minions of Abyssimus and took their home back once and for all. However, old grudges kept holding Atrocitus back. The Guardians, increasingly questionable in their decision-making, were growing desperate in maintaining power over the universe. First relying on a brutal Third Army that nearly overwhelmed the various Lantern Corps, followed by unleashing a powerful being called the First Lantern. The incident, complicated and involving many factions, drove Atrocitus into a moment of despair, and he ordered his own Lantern Corps to attack and kill their leader. Even Dexter obeyed this order, turning on his master, though the experience ultimately empowered Atrocitus and gave him a new sense of drive. He decided to go to Oa and finally end a grudge that he had been sitting on for millions of years. The Red Lanterns voluntarily chose to go with him. On Oa, the Red Lantern Corps fought hard against the power of Balthum, the First Lantern. In the end, however, it was Sinestro who managed to defeat the Guardians and take revenge on them for their growing list of crimes. However, mindful of Atrocitus and the valid grievance he had with the Guardians, 
Sinestro saved a final guardian for the Red Lantern himself. Atrocitus left his Red Lanterns to do what they please before he pursued his final chance at revenge. At long last, Atrocitus managed to kill the last person responsible for the death of his family and so many others. This event understandably changed Atrocitus. With that in mind, he created 10 new rings for the Red Lanterns in order to bolster their ranks but at a controllable rate. Dexter also experienced significant change during this time, but in a different way. When a human Red Lantern named Rancor emerged among the Red Lanterns, he developed a unique ability the others didn't have. The ability to create constructs of light, like the Green Lanterns are famous for, out of red energy. After a battle, Dexter managed to drink some of Rancor's blood, and gain this powerful ability for himself. His intelligence also seemed to increase with this, and the cat was now even able to speak complete sentences. However, Atrocitus' new plans were suddenly interrupted when Guy Gardner, on orders from Hal Jordan, arrived to remove Atrocitus' ring and take it for himself. Becoming a Red Lantern, Guy managed to take over the entire Red Lantern Corps, leading them in a more positive and heroic direction, while Gardner increasingly distanced himself from the Green Lanterns he had once been a member of. Dexter, thinking quickly, managed to save his master's life by fleeing with him and using a construct to replace the Red Lantern Ring, which normally serves as Atrocitus' heart, like any other Red Lantern. Dexter was thus the only active Red Lantern to side with Atrocitus. The two began to drift in space, and when Atrocitus woke back up, the cat explained what happened, and Atrocitus gratefully pet his loyal follower. Briefly, he considered using Dexter's power ring for himself. Though it would doom the cat, it would have been the easiest way to restore Atrocitus to power and take his revenge on Guy Gardner. Ultimately, the alien decided against it, knowing that Atrocitus' own rage would be with him no matter what, and he wasn't willing to do that to his most loyal follower. They instead set out to find a new ring for Atrocitus. The journey led the two to the Butcher, the emotional entity that represents rage. The entity had been captured by some criminals, so Dexter and Atrocitus freed the Butcher, and Atrocitus was able to take the Red Lantern into his own body, becoming an avatar of rage itself and vastly increasing his own power. However, this newfound access to power proved only momentary, as the Butcher joined the other emotional entities shortly after this in order to defeat a villain known as Relic. The Butcher, and all the other emotional entities, disappeared from this world entirely. Dexter once again had to save his master from dying without his heart in the cold vacuum of space. The cat even had to give Atrocitus a pep talk after this, as the event left his master terribly discouraged. And they set out to find one of the ten rings Atrocitus had unleashed on the universe before Gardner had attacked. They eventually did find a ring, but it had found itself a new host, a gigantic alien. This frightened Dexter, who had to be encouraged by Atrocitus echoing the cat's own words when his master had nearly given up earlier. The cat managed to create a giant construct to distract the alien, while Atrocitus crawled into the being's ear and killed him from within. The giant's power ring immediately identified Atrocitus as a being of great rage, and once again, the mighty creator of the Red Lanterns had a power ring of his own. Atrocitus managed to draw two of his most prominent lanterns, Rancor and Bleeze, out, and Dexter attacked his fellow Red Lanterns while Atrocitus watched on taunting the two over their betrayal. Rancor stayed behind to face Atrocitus and Dexter alone, so Blees could escape and warn the others of their return. Dexter and Atrocitus then began seeking out some of the other new Red Lanterns to try and recruit them against Gardner. They encountered one who called herself a judge. Atrocitus willingly submitted himself to her judgment, and she determined that, although his crimes are indeed terrible, everything he's done he believed was right, necessary, and part of the natural order of the universe. There, Atrocitus finally encountered Gardner once again. Though Dexter and his master were outnumbered, especially considering Supergirl was currently serving as a Red Lantern on Gardner's side, they were able to use Rancor as leverage in order to get Gardner and his Red Lanterns to back off. The judge, however, insisted that she wanted to hear Gardner's side of the story first, so she joined their team. Later, Gardner and his Reds managed to track down Rancor, 
but found that Dexter and Atrocitus had managed to regress him back into a berserk Red Lantern state. The human attacked his former friends. Meanwhile, Atrocitus and Dexter returned to Ismalt, not to retake it, but to dry out the Lake of Blood and shatter the central power battery of the Red Lanterns. When Gardner returned, he realized that Atrocitus was forcing his hand, and he vowed to take down the alien once and for all. Meanwhile, Atrocitus set up a new headquarters on another planet for Dexter and his other followers. A church where he could pose as a religious leader of his growing faction of Red Lanterns, surrounded by a similar mystical lake of blood like the one that Atrocitus had on Yzmalt. Now certain of his inevitable victory against Gardner, Atrocitus staged an attack on Earth to not only get Gardner's attention, but to also prove a point, as he wanted to demonstrate the rage he saw in humankind. He dumped hundreds of newly created red rings into Earth's atmosphere, creating a massive amount of new human red lanterns. This threw Earth immediately into chaos, and as always, Dexter fought by his master's side, until he was eventually incapacitated by Supergirl. Atrocitus's headquarters was destroyed in the conflict, but that victory was small in comparison to the massive amount of new Red Lanterns Atrocitus had managed to recruit because of all of this. Those remaining who were still loyal to Guy Gardner were hunted down. The Cat attacked Blees and Rancor, but thanks to their combined efforts, they were able to defeat Dexter. While the Human Lanterns were incapacitated by the Judge, after she deemed Gardner an individual worthy of a chance. Atrocitus then attacked Guy himself, only for Gardner to use ten power rings to strip both Atrocitus and Dexter of their own rings and render them inert. The two were kept alive and sent to Mogo, where they would be kept prisoner by the Green Lanterns. Gardner eventually managed to free himself of the Red Lanterns and abandoned the team, while Atrocitus and Dexter received new power rings, and returned to power on Yzmalt with the rest of the surviving Red Lanterns. Dexter would go on to serve with Atrocitus, including during a brief conflict with the Sinestro Corps. Eventually, Atrocitus began to focus on a new plan called the Red Dawn, with the intent of leaving Yzmalt once again for a new headquarters, this time on Earth, using a special item called the Rage Seed to convert the planet into a new world worthy of perfect rage. The Red Lanterns invaded Earth and erected a mystical structure known as the Hell Tower. With massive destruction and thousands of human beings immediately infected with Atrocitus' rage. Dexter was an active participant in this invasion, nearly killing two new Green Lanterns named Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz before being given a rage seed to permanently infect Earth. The cat succeeded at this, much to Atrocitus' happiness, only for Jessica to destroy the Hell Tower. Though Atrocitus willingly retreated after this, and the Green Lanterns assumed this was a victory, in secret, Red Dawn was a success. The Rage Seed has taken root on Earth, and currently, thanks to Dexter, it is growing a new emotional entity to embody rage. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my origins and bio for Dexter. So, we're going to be doing a fun little thing. A while back I was talking about how we haven't made a lot of uh, videos for the Green Lanterns and how I wanted to rectify that. A lot of different ideas were floated around and I've been toying with some of them, including one that would basically be my top 10 favorite lanterns from each core. And I was originally just going to make a top 10 video doing that, but for various reasons it just doesn't work. Mainly because it doesn't ramp up. It just goes from one to the next, and it's not really much of a reveal when some of the cores only have one or two members. So instead, we're going to feature each of my favorite Lantern characters from each of the core in an Origins and Bio video of their own. This way, it'll not be as big a deal when some of them, such as the upcoming Greed video, are a little more obvious about who that character is going to be about and what that video is going to be about. There's still some value in doing all of this. So to that end, my favorite Red Lantern is Dexter. I actually thought a lot about this because I was a fan of the Red Lantern series that ran during mostly the New 52 era, and I really enjoy a lot of different characters. There was a strong debate for me between picking someone like Atrocitus or Guy Gardner, 
to even some of the lesser known members like Skalox or Bleez. As I'm a fan of both these characters and a lot of development went into all of these different lanterns. But my favorite has to be Dexstar. The little house cat really works for me as a character and really works in terms of expressing what I like about the different Lantern Corps and what's interesting about them. Because being a Lantern really isn't about being the smartest being or the strongest being. It's expressing a particular emotion or domain in a very strong way. In the case of Green Lanterns, it's beings who have a great deal of willpower. In the case of Red Lanterns, it's beings who have a great deal of rage. And nothing beyond that matters. So it can be an alien who survives some horrible series of atrocities or tremendous abuse at the hands of powerful creatures. Or it can be a house cat that was treated horribly by a couple of cops and a handful of criminals in its lifetime. And from there, Dexter would always be at Atrocitus' side. The whole master-cat relationship was explored nicely in the Red Lantern series, and it's very touching how Dexter is the only one who stood by Atrocitus' side through pretty much everything through the entire Red Lantern's history, uh, with the one exception when everybody turned on Atrocitus, and only because Atrocitus ordered everybody to turn on him. This cat's been loyal, and in turn, Atrocitus has shown a lot of loyalty for the cat. There's been a few times where he could have just abandoned Dexter and would have probably benefited from doing so, but he's spared the cat and kept him at his side because I think he likes him. There's a lot of great panels and quiet little scenes where Atrocitus is just sitting there thinking about his next move and just petting at a Dexter. And I find that very interesting. It humanizes Atrocitus to a degree, but also just shows a little something about what the Lantern Corps are all about. And to me, that makes him the most interesting out of all the Red Lanterns in a pretty competitive field. If you're looking for recommendations, some of Dexter's earliest appearances are really good. But I think he really shines at his best at certain moments during the Red Lantern series, particularly once Charles Soul took over. But I still have a lot of love for certain aspects of the Peter Milligan era, even if it feels like we're kind of dancing around more interesting storylines during that time period. And I do have to say, looking back on the Red Lantern series, while I remember enjoying that series a lot, it really didn't hold up as much as I would have wanted it to. And in some ways, looking back on this series, certain aspects of it didn't hold up very well to scrutiny, and a lot of the flaws of that series were a lot more obvious to me than the first time that I read the story and in reading that particular comic. Anyways, that's about it. Thanks for watching. If you like Comic Island, be sure to subscribe. That's the easiest way to see all our new videos. And if you want to see the rest of the bios I have planned for the different Lantern Corps, be sure to uh, subscribe so that you get notified about that sort of thing. And it's going to be fun talking about my favorite characters from each of the Lantern Corps. I bet some of them are going to surprise you guys. Not the next one though. Next up is Greed and pretty much the character you all think it's going to be, it's going to be. I did have a few options to be fair. Characters like Lex Luthor and Hal Jordan were technically Orange Lanterns for a time. While Larfleeze's constructs have enough of a character arc and history to them, some of them would be viable characters to talk about in an Origins bio. But it's the obvious one, it's the one you're all gonna guess and assume, so uh, there's nothing too surprising about any of that. Nonetheless, stay tuned for that, because it's gonna be a fun video about a very fun character. And don't forget to like our video, and keep reading comics.